This hour of Disturbing the Peace brought to you in part by AmeriQ Federal Credit Union. Steve Euknis and Pauly Sevilla with myself, Chris McManus, here on Disturbing the Peace. Uh, now joining us via the USA Data Net guest line is former SU Center, Miami Heat star, uh, and now DJ, Ronnie Cycli. Hey, Ronnie, how are things in Miami? Well, it's been crazy in Miami with uh, with the LeBron signing and um, with all the players they're getting. It's just uh, it's, it's been it's been absolutely nuts for this time of year in Miami. Usually, it's kind of dead in July, but uh, it's definitely alive. The whole city all about all about the Miami Heat now with LeBron and Bosch coming in. Uh, absolutely, it's all about the Miami Heat. It's. Uh, you, the biggest bandwagon you've ever seen. <laughs> what's uh what's like the craziest LeBron celebration, the the craziest Miami Heat celebration you've seen in the last couple of days? Well, I haven't uh I haven't really yeah, I mean just it's just the enthusiasm of people in general. I mean, people that know basketball that don't know basketball. I mean, he's just um he's 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 a conglomerate by himself, you know. So He's good for business. He's good for for the city of Miami. He's um, he's good for tourism. He's you know it's just uh, it's amazing. You know he's basically turned Cleveland into uh, you know a, a place people wanted to go and uh, didn't mind going to Cleveland and watching him play. Imagine now in Miami. I mean it's just uh, you know the guy is just an amazing uh, specimen. As a former NBA player, how do you feel the decision was made? Uh, so publicly, and uh, what does it do to the NBA with this uh, trio down in Miami? Well, just uh, kind of, you know, the, the, I think the league worked for so many years to create parity uh, between all the teams, and I think, uh, you know, it's, it's you know, when I was on the other side of the fence, when we used to watch the Lakers and the, fi- and, and the Celtics uh, every year getting to the finals, you know, kind of, you know, you go through – the regular season, and every team knew knew that the, the Celtics and, and and the Lakers were going to be in the finals, and then it was Chicago, and it was Detroit for a couple of years, and you know you build dynasties, and you kind of stick that way, and and now we're you know it's it's uh, in in our backyard, and and I'm I'm very happy. Does it create parity? No, it doesn't create parity. It just kind of unevens the bar for everybody else. But you know, at least on paper, uh, what they do. On the on the court is completely this is something different, but uh, are we excited to have a dynasty built in Miami? Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of talk about three guys not being able to necessarily win a championship. There's going to be pieces they're going to put around them. They've started to do that. Um, do you see a lot of players coming in just to play as part of this conglomerate? Absolutely. I think it's uh, you know you saw that with the Celtics. Uh, a lot of people, you know, a lot of the veteran players that have been in the league for a while will take less money. To play and get a championship ring, uh, then go to you know for a little bit more money and 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 end up you know kind of uh, just going through the motions for the regular season. Would you have done it? I'd do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah, would you, maybe they'll sign you right now if you talk to them. <laughs> uh, I wish. I mean, I'm telling you, I would do it for free. I would. Uh, I would use up my six pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie Cycli with us here on disturbing the peace. Uh, do, do you still look at it as as Dwayne Wade's? Team is he still the lead guy? Well, I mean, um, I mean, Dwayne Wade has been the face of the Miami Heat for so many years, uh, and he's he's a great player. Um, it's just going to take uh, a lot of maturity uh, for Dwayne to be able to share the spotlight uh, with LeBron. Uh, you know, LeBron is LeBron, so I don't think there's going to you know it's. You know, when you when you're walking in the street and get on getting off the bus, everybody used to yell out, "Dwayne, Dwayne, Dwayne!" Now it's going to be maybe more LeBron, LeBron, LeBron. So it takes a lot of character, you know, for those players just to kind of massage their egos and 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 do it for the betterment of the team. It's going to be interesting. So, all right, we'll go from the NBA talk to how did you become a club DJ? Well, it's not really a club DJ. I produce music. I make music. I produce music, and I play the music. Um, I've been doing this since I was 14 years old. I've always uh, loved music. I've always been around music, and um, and I've done it for so for so many years. And then uh, you know, all my friends and people that always listen to uh, to my music would always tell me, "Why don't you just play, you know, publicly?" And I never wanted to venture. You know, this is uh, more of a hobby. It's 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 a passion of mine. It's something that I love to do. And I didn't think that uh, the public needed to know, you know, what my passion was. It could be painting or art or something else, but mine was music. So uh, I tried to keep it, um, you know, kind of 
in the closet as much as I could. But, uh, you know, fortunately and unfortunately, it's been, uh, you know, people are starting to come to these places, and I have a few tracks coming out uh, at the end of this month, uh, a few songs coming out, and then I have a CD coming out in, in, in the September. And, uh, you know, when, when you're playing in these clubs and people are looking at you and they're like, is it or isn't it? Isn't it? Or is it? You know, they, they, just, yeah. they, they, can't, they can't tell whether it is me or not me, uh, besides the size, obviously. But um, so, you know, we have to put that to bed and make sure that now they know that it is me. <laughs> It, it really is like it's gotten pretty big. We went to the we went to your website on, on RonnieCycling dot com and saw the video. I mean, th- those places are packed. Is that you know? Th- it, are you like prepared for that because of playing in so many in, in front of so many people uh, with hoops, or, or is it a completely different ball game? Oh, well, it's a completely different ball game. That's why I didn't. Uh, that's why I wanted to start out my. You know, I, I started out my music career and not having anybody talk about basketball. I would just kind of slip through, you know, and, and play in these clubs and let the music speak for itself. I didn't want basketball to kind of um, get me the, nori- the notoriety to, to be able to play in clubs and be more like a kind of a uh, celebrity DJ slash type of thing. I wanted just to be a regular guy that goes into the club and sees whether my music and what I'm doing works, and I've done that for the last two years. I've played in all the biggest clubs in the world, and all these clubs, it's funny, you know, all these clubs that I play in, probably 80 to 90% of the people that follow me to, to these clubs know me as, as a DJ, but don't know me as the basketball player. You know, it's just, you know, sometimes when I play in Vegas, where you have a lot of people that know sports and come out to an event, and then they see me, they, they you know, they start you know, they, they know exactly who I am, but uh, but I built it based on, on the music crowd and not the sports crowd. Ronnie Sykley joining us, former Heat and Syracuse star. Well, you do all these clubs and everything now. Where was your favorite place to hang out in Syracuse? Well, um, wow, we're going back years. I'll tell you, there used to be a club called Suburban Park back in the day. Um, and that was uh, that was probably the the one and only club in Syracuse, um, wow, uh, <laughs> it was off campus, you know, because on campus you have the, the, you know, the Fagans and you have the small uh, bars and stuff, but this was like the only off campus big club type of thing. And I don't know how long it lasted, but I'm not sure it lasted too long. And that's where we used to hang out all the time. Hey, uh, you know, if you're looking for some place to play up here, I'm sure the uh, the radio got, the radio geeks holiday party would be, would be happy to have you. <laughs> I don't think the Radio Geeks holiday party was going house music at their, at their party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate the time. Uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you again sometime soon, and we, we hope we see you at the Carrier Dome for a game coming up sometime. Absolutely. I'm definitely going to make it up uh, next year. I think they've got a great team, and uh, I definitely want to watch them a few times at home. Just keep it warm. Keep it warm up there. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. I, I don't know if I can promise that. You can do that at least. All right, you guys. Take it easy, Ronnie. Thank you.